I'm Diana, and you are visiting our Raptor Center again today. Um, we're indoors, and I've got some help on um, the camera end, so I'm going to wear my face mask today because we thought it might be fun to give you a little more behind the scenes, and we're going to go into our ICU or intensive care unit. Of course, the Nature and Wildlife Discovery Center has got lots of things going on. We have our mountain campus in Beulah, the river campus here in Pueblo, and then, of course, the Raptor Center. And the Raptor Center's job is to help birds of prey, and we do that through education and wildlife rehabilitation. So one of the things that people often ask us um, when they see us out and about doing an educational program is, what happens when the birds arrive? Where do they go? What do you guys do with them? So we thought we'd give you a little behind the scenes, just a short program today, because we have a lot of birds in ICU, so we don't want to stress them out very long but um, I thought we'd take you in beside the scene. So behind me is the ICU, so we're gonna just wander in and take a look at some stuff. So here in the ICU, when a bird arrives, we um, obviously have to make some decisions about what's going on with it. So we, first of all, take a lot of information. So every bird, when they come in, gets an admission form. And that's just tell, gives us some information, like who found it, who brought it to us. Sometimes we have these wonderful people called um, transport volunteers. Most of them are coordinated by Colorado State Parks and Wildlife, but we also have some volunteers here that help as well. And maybe they transported the bird, went out and rescued it or picked it up from someone and brought it to us. We really want to know where the bird came from um, because if it's an adult especially, we want to return it to the area it arrived in. Um, if it's a youngster, maybe it could be reunited with its parents or if there's something going on with illness or poisoning, we definitely want to know location so we can let Parks and Wildlife know, so maybe, or Fish and Wildlife Service, so that we could follow up and see if it's a big issue for lots of animals getting poisoned. Um, so we take all kinds of data. We do, after that, the visitors, we thank them. Sometimes they stay because they want to know what's going on and we send them out to our visitor area to look. Other times they just take off and we give them a call later on in the day when we know more what's happening with the bird. So our job then um, comes, the bird comes back here into the ICU room. <laughs> it's a tiny little building. You're probably thinking, wow, those ceilings are low. <laughs> they are. <laughs> the Raptor Center is an old pig barn <laughs> built in the 1940s. So <laughs> it's 80 year old building and it's falling apart. So if anybody wins the lottery and wants to help us out, we need a new building. So anyhow, <laughs> one that you don't hit your head on the ceiling. But when they come in, they get an initial exam. It's sort of like, just like if you're going to the hospital, uh, maybe something happens, you have to go to the ER, they look you over, they may put you aside in a room that's nice and quiet because you're panicked, you're really stressed, you're shocky, and they want you to relax for a little bit so that you don't have a heart attack on them, um, things like that, and that certainly can happen here. Sometimes a bird is just so freaked out by what's happened to him that we just, if we don't see anything life-threatening, like injury or bleeding or something, we actually just put the bird in a quiet spot for about a half hour, let them relax. Then we'll come back and do head to toe um, exam, check out all of their body parts as we can and try to determine what's going on with them. And we try to do it as rapidly as possible because everything is to try to reduce stress on that animal. So it's a crazy thing. Um, we want to take care of it because stress can actually kill wildlife. I can't tell you how many times people have come into the center with a bird in their lap, <laughs> curled up in their arm, and they're petting it. And they, they, they say, oh, this guy, he's so calm and relaxed, he really likes us. And the, the truth of the matter is, is he's so stressed out, he just doesn't know what to do. He's just going into shock, and you need to, we need to relax him. So if you come across injured wildlife, it's essential that you get them into a container, a crate, a cardboard box large enough to um, accommodate them with some air holes, anything like that that you can get him out of your view and keep him safe um, from other things. So once we determine what's going on, it may be a broken bone, we'll need to wrap it. We have vet wrap and gauze, splints, all of those kinds of things. Most of the time birds when they arrive are dehydrated, so we can give them fluids in lots of ways. One way that we do it is a gavage, which is running a tube down the mouth and the throat so that we can put the fluid into the crop or the stomach of the bird and that delivers um, liquids really quick. We can also, we have IV, we keep ringers on hand and we can use it either as an IV or we can 
um, go under the skin, and that's called sub-Q. Maybe you've had a pet that needed sub-Q fluids, or maybe you yourself, they've given you some sub-Q, but we can give it fluids rapidly to help it um, help recover and feel better quick. Sometimes animals come in and they're so dehydrated, they're just exhausted, and you give them a little bit of fluids, and they start to perk up, and then they want to kill you, and that's a good thing. We like when our birds want to kill us. <laughs> that's a good sign that they're feeling much better. Um, and then once they're hydrated, we're feeling good, maybe they could eat, or they may need, if they're really depleted, totally starving, we actually can provide them a liquid diet for as long as they need to, just because food sometimes has to be really, really easy to digest. So sometimes we get them stable, and like if they have a fracture, they'll need to go to our vet. So Dr. Gurmaroff is our vet, and, um, and the staff at High Country Veterinary also help us out and they help us with x-rays and surgeries and all that great stuff. They donate a lot of supplies, so we could not do our job without them. Veterinary care would be very expensive if we didn't have vets who donated their services to us. So once they get settled in, get their injuries, um, we do put them into enclosures. We have a set up here, so today um, we'll take a quick peek. Lizzie, you mm -hmm. can come closer. Lizzie is my volunteer. She's helping with the camera. So. <coughs> Excuse me. So just arrived today. This little guy just came in. This is an American kestrel, and it's a fledgling. Um, he came to us from Colorado Springs. Um, last night, I guess, Colorado Springs had a huge storm. And after the storm, they found this little guy um, totally drenched in the parking lot. And so they scooped him up and took him home for the night and brought him down. <coughs> Luckily, he doesn't have any injuries. He's just scared and a little dehydrated. So we're just going to let him rest for a bit. We have some other baby kestrels, so he'll join them when he's feeling a little bit better. <coughs> also, the winds in Pueblo the other day, hi, sweetie, brought us this cute baby. <coughs> <coughs> you can go for me. There you go. This is a little Cooper's Hawk chick. <coughs> and he's got his breakfast there. Looks like he's been trying to eat a little bit. Just to make it easy for him, we've chopped up his food. He's having rat this morning. Mm. Now, that's a fun job, chopping rats first thing in the morning. That's my day. First thing in the morning, I chop rats. Before I go home, I chop rats and visit the dumpster. How's that for end of day? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. All right, so let's let him rest because we don't want to scare him too bad. We don't want to spend too much time. So these are just juveniles, and they should be just fine. Over here, we have a few more serious patients. So... This little guy here, this is a great horned owl. Now, we just unwrapped his wing. Um, he had extreme soft tissue damage. Um, he was totally bruised, lots of swelling, no fractures though. So we unwrapped his wing today just to see the swelling's down, the bruising's cleaning up, but we wanted to see if he could support, if the wing would function normally. We do suspect some nerve damage, so I think later today, because he's drooping it or hanging it down, we're going to wrap it back up and let it let it rest a while longer. He's had it wrapped for about a week, but I think we'll give him some more time. But he's just, we don't know what happened to him. Some people just found him and brought him in. Um, this little guy, is, oh, this is a little baby red tail. <laughs> he's a fledgling. He has been um, obviously hit because he has spinal trauma. He's not able to use his legs. They are moving. He's trying to stand. Um, <laughs> looks like he's got a little breakfast leftovers there. <laughs> so we've got him supported um, with some pillows and blankets just to kind of help him stay up on his feet. Uh, I don't know if he'll make it. We'll have to just give him some time. He's on some anti-inflammatories and some pain meds. Um, and we'll just see how those legs recover. Spinal trauma is really difficult. He's had x-rays of his back. We couldn't find a fracture. But anything neurological is always a problem. You don't know if they're going to come back from it. So we'll give him a little time. And then this guy, he, he's wicked. <laughs> I like this one. This is another great horned owl. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to kill you. That's what I like to see. Anyway, he has a fractured ulna bone. So you can see the blue wing wrap there. He'll be traveling to the vet first of the week. Um, for an x-ray to see if his bone has healed. I hope it has because I want to see him fly away because he's just a nasty little owl, which is great. He doesn't like us. He's like, go away, leave me alone, you bother me. So he's just adorable. 
Now the birds will stay here in the ICU. They generally stay with us in this room anywhere from a week to sometimes a month or more, it depends on the extent of their injuries. And um, they'll move, of course, from this room outdoors to maybe a small enclosure at first. And then as the bird progresses through its healing, it'll move into a bigger and bigger um, enclosure and eventually especially for the larger birds, um, into the flight cages where they can exercise and, and do all of those things. So um, also, I won't, we've got a couple other birds that are a little more shocky, so they're not in ICU, they're in a, actually ICU two. We have three ICU areas. We have this as our main ICU. Actually, we have four areas now. Um, across the hall from us is what we call ICU two. And in there, um, it's much quieter, less busy than this room. So a lot of the more sensitive birds go over there. Um, there's crates, of course, and there's also a walk-in enclosure that's very nice that they, a bigger bird like an eagle or a heron, yes, we get herons occasionally. Um, pelicans <laughs> come in sometimes, even though they're not birds of prey, but a larger bird or a bunch of little birds could go in there very nicely. We have another room that we're working on creating a lab area, and we put a walk-in enclosure in there just so that we have more space for inside little guys. And then, of course, we have an outdoor ICU as well. So. ICU outdoors is empty, <laughs> but the other two rooms do have birds in them. There's a, a crow in ICU 2 with a fractured uh, ulna and radial bones. He unwrapped his wing last night, so we'll be wrapping that up here pretty quick. And then um, in the uh, lab room, we have baby, more baby kestrels. They're much younger than this little guy that came in, so um, we'll be probably putting them all together in a big walk-in enclosure here in the next day or two and they can all keep each other company until they're big enough to go outside. So this is ICU and this is what happens. A lot of life happens here, sadly, a lot of death. We do admit roughly 300 birds of prey a year come to our center. This year it's much lower and part of that I think is because of the pandemic. People aren't out and about traveling, so um, injuries to wildlife on highways is down about 50% from where it usually is. And that's great. We're seeing that reflected in the birds that are coming into us. We're seeing a lot less auto traumas. So that's actually a very welcome and nice thing for the birds. The pandemic, not so great for us, but for wildlife, it's a wonderful break for them from all of our busy activities. Um, <clears throat> so we're so glad you can join us today. We're going to keep this nice and short. We don't want to stress out our animals too bad. But if you want to learn more about the Nature and Wildlife Discovery Center, of course, you can um, check out our website, hikeandlearn.org, or you, of course, can go backwards through our Facebook pages. There's lots of information and great posts from all of our staff about our organization and what we do. If you would like to help out on our website, there is a page where you can click. We can use, obviously, donations of cash are always welcome, but here at the Raptor Center, we're always looking for supplies, things that you can do, cleaning supplies like bleach, we use Mr. Clean, we use Simple Green, we can always use sponges and brooms and mops. <laughs> um, what I said, I said bleach. Medical supplies like veterinary wrap or um, cohesive bandaging is what it's called, gauze pads, all kinds of crazy things. Sheets, oh, I'm gonna put out a big plea for towels. <laughs> One of the things that we go through, especially in the summer, a lot of our towels. So if you're cleaning out your closets because you got some extra time, towels, sheets, pillowcases, are all wonderful items for you to donate for us. We love getting all of that supply and um, we're not worried about getting overwhelmed. We have lots of storage <laughs> to put things in. So if you have questions, of course, you can always send us an email um, and we'll be happy to reply as quickly as we can. But your help is appreciated. It's keeping us going. And um, certainly if you're able to help, we appreciate it. If you can't, no worries. Everyone's struggling right now. We understand that. So thanks for tuning in today. Marcus, by the way, says hello. He had a great time last Sunday, <laughs> so I'm sure he'll be back at some point. I'm surprised he didn't wander into the ICU. He knows better, but <laughs> sometimes he does just to check out what's happening. So thanks so much for visiting with us today. Well, and this has been the ICU from the Nature and Wildlife Discovery Center. Have a safe day.